Hello, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Bob Reich, who is in Surprise, Arizona. How are you doing, Bob? Yes. Good. How are you? <laughs> excellent, excellent. And and Bob is a business coach uh, and, and works with uh, works with a lot of different companies and individuals to help them to optimize their businesses. And what we wanted to talk about today is, you know, let's face it, we've been through a lot of traumatic change during the pandemic and with upheavals in in society and all those other things. And it's very easy, right, Bob? It's very easy to let all this stuff distract you. And then, but not just distract you, then to kind of use all of this as a kind of get out of jail free card so that anything that happens in your business or your life, you can blame on external circumstances. Absolutely. I've seen so much of that. And there's so much blame and excuses going around. And it's really one of the things we found, especially in leadership, is one of the things that we've seen is a lot more blame and excuses and a lot less responsibility and accountability. Yeah, so and absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And it's become and I think people have kind of gotten themselves into this habit, I guess, of always, uh, you know, looking externally. And, and let's face it, there's plenty of people out there who will give you ammunition to support your point of view, doesn't matter what your point of view is, you'll, right. find, you'll find people to support it. So when you work with when you work with leaders now, Bob, how do you help them to start to push aside all the extraneous noise and start to focus? Really, you kind of said it earlier, it's about externals and internals. And so many people are focused on the inter externals of what this person is doing, what that's doing, what this political party is doing, what that political party is doing, what this state's doing. And, and we see so much of that. And really, it's really about what's on the inside of us. And really, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, it's not necessarily about our circumstances. It's more of what we can control. And one of the things that we focus here at Caveat Institute is the four principles of of controlling your own successful outcome. And the first point we use is what you think is important. And the one and the one person we talk to most often is ourselves. We talk to each we talk to ourselves at night every time we're in the car and we're always talking to ourselves and one of the things that we've realized is what we think is what we believe. And our thinking really creates our belief system. And that's true in religion, that's true in politics, that's true in anything that we do is if we think of it enough, we're gonna end up believing it. And then yeah. when we take our beliefs, which is our second point, we move that up into activity. And our activity is a result of our beliefs. When we focus on our activity, that is what creates a successful outcome, either negative or positive. It's going to create a successful outcome. And it all comes back to what we think is what we believe. And our successful outcome is measured not only by our activity, but by our desired outcome. And our beliefs, which are, which are from our thinking, really creates that from the foundation. Yeah. And, and interesting when you're just talking about the, the think part and the self-talk. I read it in Psychology Magazine or something, but I, I think the statistic was either 67 or 70 percent, could have been higher, mm -hmm. of our daily, our daily self-talk is negative. So, I mean, there is, so, there is something that's completely within our control. Absolutely. And, and when, you know, when you're talking to yourselves and you're telling you about those negative things, that's what you're going to believe if you're talking about those, not necessarily things are always going great, but, you know, you see a positive future, you see a future that is bright, you see your destination. When we can focus on that, that will start to create that belief system that becomes not only more healthy, but also becomes more effective in having that, uh, that lifestyle that you're looking for that business that you're looking for and it creates the outcome that really you're looking for as well yeah, and let's face it i mean belief has its own energy as well in, in terms because sometimes sometimes i mean as long as you're doing all the right things and you maybe don't see the result of it immediately sometimes it's the belief part is the part that will get you through get you over that hump when maybe you're feeling like you know well i, I just don't see the evidence mm -hmm. but if you continue to do the right things and you continue to believe it'll come it'll come to fruition absolutely and our belief is so powerful because our belief is really the you know the the core of who we are what we believe in is we're we're very passionate about what we believe in. And one of the things that people don't always 
realize is that our activity is a result of our core belief system. Yeah, no, and, and that, that's a really interesting point as well, because therefore you can almost work backwards, can't you? And you mm -hmm. can say, okay, I'm doing this, but I'm not doing any of that. Uh, therefore, if I work backwards, I, I suddenly come to the realization that perhaps my beliefs are out of whack, or maybe I don't even believe in myself. Maybe I don't believe in my business. Maybe I don't believe in my product as I should. Absolutely. And you said that perfectly. You can work forward. You can work backward. And a lot of times when we see our activities, what is your activity? What do other people see? Uh, what is the result of some of those activities? You work back and what are those beliefs? And really, where are those beliefs coming from? And you're absolutely correct. It is through that self-talk. It says talking to ourselves over and over again, which then again creates the beliefs. So, um, so, so, Bob, when you work with somebody now, say somebody who's gone through a hard time, and maybe they're in this situation where they're mm -hmm. just not, they're just not seeing the, the the light at the end of the tunnel. How do you help them? I mean, what's the first thing you tell them to do in order to just even even give them a hint that there's a better way? Well, first of all, I want to get them talking. I want to start hearing what they believe and what they're thinking about themselves. And what many people do is they want to tell you what you they think you want to hear. And what we have to do is we got to get below that. And that is usually done through specific questions that are that are really focused on not just digging the surface, but really digging deep, really digging under that hard rock, that clay that, you know, in Arizona, we have very hard ground. And for you to get under that, you got to get under the clay. And that's really what we need to focus on. And really the number one tool to do that is asking the right questions. This could take one session, this could take many sessions, this could take some time to do this. But once we start getting them to be honest, not only with themselves, but also with us, and we start hearing what they're thinking, that is when we can start understanding where they're coming from. And what really is prompting a lot of those thoughts, and many times it comes from, you know, past hurts and past childhood and past different experiences. But that's really, they have to really, number one, be honest with themselves, be honest with us. That's when we can really start focusing on the root of that thinking and that's really important unfortunately a lot of times when these people talk or you know coaches are talking to them they're just focused on the surface it's important to get underneath and asking the right questions is the number one tool to dig deep and that's why it's uh, it's super important to find the right coach uh, somebody like mm -hmm. bob here because let's face it bob it's kind of like uh, probably like therapy in some ways. You know, a lot of people go and lie to their therapist because they tell them what they want to hear, which completely defeats the whole purpose of it. Uh, again, like you said, I mean, maybe some people come to their business coach and they're they're feeling a little bit embarrassed or they don't really want to reveal this the extent of the issues or even of their mindset. So it is really important that you pick somebody like yourself who's empathetic who can draw it out of them um so what um what what advice do you give to people in terms of finding the right business coach i mean what should they be looking for in a coach that's so important and thank you so much for asking that uh, go ahead and log on to coach uh, caveatcoach.com that's caveatcoach.com or you can get on bobrish.com my website and there's a document on there it's a pdf and it's entitled what to look for in a good business coach and i always tell people it doesn't matter if you're looking at me or somebody else what's important is that you're finding the right person that you trust and it's really important to have that trust not only from the coach to the client but the client to the coach because that that relationship is very important. And this, this document, this PDF on how to fight, find the right coach, there's eight processes in there. There's eight steps in there. So you can ask the right question, ask the coach those questions to make sure that they are not only qualified, but are they really the right coach for you? So caveatcoach.com or bobrish.com, uh, you can find that uh, PDF. Go ahead and download it. And that would be my gift to you to look for that right coach. Whether that's me or somebody else, it's important. John, you're absolutely correct that you have to have that right person that not only is qualified, but understands and believes in you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And let's face it, I mean, things are hard enough right now, particularly if you are maybe a small business owner or a solopreneur or whatever. I mean, it's lonely and it's hard. And you, so one of the investments that you should make is investing in, in having somebody, uh, having a coach like, like Bob or someone else, because you need that third party, the person who's just invested in your success, but has no other emotional attachment mm -hmm. uh, and somebody who you, as you said, you can, you can trust. 
Um, one of the things I was actually looking here where you're going, one of you have one of your quotes on your site that you have when you choose not to participate in hysteria, you chose you choose to focus on reality. And I think, again, uh, as I said, putting aside all of the politics of everything right now, regardless of where you sit on the on the spectrum, regardless of what your experience was like during the, the pandemic, you definitely are faced with that choice of whether you throw yourself 100% into the craziness and join in in whichever echo chamber suits you the best mm -hmm. or you decide that at the end of the day the things that you can impact are right in front of your nose so important to absolutely there's so much noise and you said that perfectly there's so much noise around and if you listen to my podcast if you listen to my youtubes one of the things you'll hear me talk about quite often is stepping stones and stumbling blocks we make that choice. And each stumbling st stepping stone or stumbling block looks exactly the same. The difference is how do you see it? Do you see the stepping stone that you can move forward in despite the circumstances? Or do you choose to see it as a stumbling block and step back? It's really about you. And there's so much going on today, so many uh, different opinions and different uh, directions that people can go. It really comes down to, are you choosing to choose your own outcome based on your own thinking? And that's what's really important in the end. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a that's a perfect way of putting it. And you know, are you are you choosing are you choosing the right outcome? Are you choosing are the choices you're making? Is that leading towards the outcome that you really want? And and I think the other thing, um, um, Bob, and I'm sure this is a conversation you have with, with your clients all the time. Is I think I don't think people a lot of people know what their purpose is or have thought about what their purpose is, why they're doing what they're doing. And if ever there was a time, the pandemic was probably the best time for for self-reflection because it actually gave people a little maybe a little space and opportunity to do that but i do think that people avoid that a lot is is mm -hmm. the self-reflection but not really understanding your purpose or why you get out of bed every day why you do what you do i mean even even spending a short time trying to figure that out i think can have a massive outsized mm -hmm. impact on your life now, this is one of the things that we focus on and work on at caveat institute one of the processes that we work on is is what business are you in? And a lot of people don't realize what business they're in. They're looking to, you know, I became an orthodontist. I became a sales agent. I became a financial advisor. I became whatever it may be. And sometimes they believe that is their identity. And that's what's really wrong is because that's not their identity. That's not who they are. That's not their purpose. And one of the things that we really focus on is not only going through that process, but the first thing to understand how to know, you know, what, what, what who you really are and what what you really do is understanding purpose and we talk about purpose is not making money uh richard branson says it perfect if you if you go into business to make money you're out of business but so many people are focused on that dollar and how much money am i going to make really the purpose no matter where you're at your purpose is really one thing it's based on the value you create for others it's not about success which is about me it's about significance which is about other people when you're successful you may not be significant when you're significant you're always successful and that's one of the things that we focus on is number one purpose is to create create value. The second purpose is to generate revenue. But the magic is, is when the generating revenue goes from the purpose of generating, generating revenue, when it goes to revenue becomes a result of your value that you create, that's really the magic. And when you can get to that point, now you really understand who you are and what you're doing, and you're really creating significance for the next generation. No, absolutely. And when you focus on on the value part of this, as you said, of the creating value, it kind of gets you out of your own way a little bit because that's a very different focus. If I'm thinking every day, okay, what my purpose is to create value, what value am I creating today? That's a lot more empowering and motivational than what's on my task list for today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we talk about priority management and having that list and having your calendar. And, and those are per, those are systems and processes that help you fulfill your real purpose, to make sure that you're thinking the right things, doing the right things, believing the right things, and that your actions are truly there to create your successful outcome. Yeah. And what do you think is uh, what do you think is one of the major things that holds people back from mind shift change? There's a lot of things. I think a lot of it is just fear. I, I think it's the fear of the unknown, the fear of if I do change, what could happen? 
and it really is about understanding that it's fear is not something that we can get rid of. Fear is something that we learn to control. And, and I always talk about the opposite of fear is, is the, the, uh, the ability to not really care. And a lot of times what happens is when people lose that fear, they don't care. And that's when they make a lot of their mistakes. A lot of times that fear is really what propels people. That fear is what may, keeps you focused on that stone in front of you to keep it focused as a stepping stone or does it allow it to become a stumbling stone? So I think that, that fear is really what not only uh, paralyzes people, but it also what propels people. And I think a lot of times if they don't understand really who they are and what they're thinking, a lot of times things like things happen and people don't really realize that they're really uh, allowing the circumstances to control versus them in control. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I always think that when you when you don't take control or you just let things happen or let them un, un, unfold, you're really outsourcing your future to fate, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and that's obviously, a, it's a, a, and that can go any way. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely correct. And it's really about not only being in control, you know, with what you can control around you, but it always starts with what's right between your ears. Yeah, it, absolutely. And, and I love what you're saying there about fear, because I do think we, um, we underestimate sometimes the power of fear. We underestimate how much uh, havoc that can play on our decision making. And I think, but the thing is, I don't think we confront it often enough. And again, this is something when you work with somebody like a Bob is like, this is a safe place mm -hmm. to confront that fear. And we always know that when you confront fears, they normally turn out to be less severe than you thought they were. Absolutely. You couldn't have said that any better. You know, the, one of the things people say is I worry and works because 90% of what I worry about never happens, yeah. you know, and, and people sometimes, you know, put themselves in that position to actually believe that's true. Really what they're doing is they're putting a very negative blame excuses mindset right in front of them. And they're really keeping them from themselves from really being the significant leader that they were meant to be. And really when we focus on fear, I love how you said when you face fear head on to, to allow it to propel you, it keeps you from being complacent. It keeps you from not caring and making those mistakes as many times fear when it propels you, it keeps you focused use it to your advantage don't allow fear to control you that's where so many people get themselves in trouble and may not even realize it yeah and i think now is the time to 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 really kind of confront your fears and and be a little braver because i and i don't mean that in any derogatory sense at all i think from i think it's an in in terms of opportunity i think everybody has an opportunity to have to hit a reset button a little bit of and and to go on and use this time as you as you always so eloquently say is to propel yourself with a stepping stone, mm -hmm. uh, but you have to but you have to embrace the opportunity that's been given you. We've had a horrible time with pandemics and all these other stuff, but in everything there is an opportunity, and there's an opportunity here to reset if you're if you're willing to take it. Uh, you know, in, in embracing that opportunity was perfect. And so many people ask me, how did your business do in 2020? And it did fantastic. We grew in 2020. Mm -hmm. We helped a lot of people not only stay in business, but we also help coaching programs and, and people and entrepreneurs to actually start their business and grow their business right in the middle of the pandemic. And one of the things I told people, I said it in interviews, I said it on the phone is, what is my secret is business as usual. Although that in 2020, we did change a lot of things. Businesses shut down, you know, businesses had to change the way they did things. But where I talk about business as usual is not necessarily the externals, it was all the internals. And what we focused on was our thinking, our belief, our actions, and our outcome. That never changed. Although that we shifted a lot of different um, processes and systems through 2020 from 2019, and we've done that in 2021, it has always been business as usual because our circumstances have changed. Some of our systems and processes have been tweaked. But when we say business as usual, our mindset and the way we think has never changed. It stayed consistent on our success. And how I like to say is we've heard it. We've heard insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. We talk about success and significance is doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same results. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's a great, it, it's a great point, and, and I love that. Uh, I love that business as usual because at times like this, you hear a lot of people throwing out. I mean, 
I never want to hear the word new normal again because it's, mm-hmm. seriously, I'll have to I'll have to commit myself to a to a home for the bewildered if I hear that word again, hear that <laughs> phrase again. But um, um, but we we have and a lot of people talk about it, but we always have this inclination to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Oh, look, mm-hmm. this has happened. Therefore, everything needs to change one hundred and fifty percent. I'm I mean I came. I came to the U.S. from Ireland during the dot com uh, era, and I remember that like, oh, oh, old business rules don't apply anymore until, of course, they did. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then everything imploded. Same with the financial crisis. Oh, you don't need to put 20 percent down in a house. Are you mad? Uh, That's old style thinking Mm -hmm. until you lose everything. Uh, and, and, And I love that point is that that there are fundamentals that hold true and we have to be very careful about hold, about focusing on the fundamentals that hold true and that continue to power success and not be tempted to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think you said that perfectly. You know, we refer to it as fundamentals, essentials, principles. And although our principles don't change over time, our systems and process do. You know, so yes, it's important to keep up with the times and make sure that our, we are able to communicate with our audience. However, those principles always stay the same. And that's one thing about Caveat Institute is our principles never change. Yeah, and I think that, again, great Great, uh, great way you pull up, Bob, is absolutely your process has changed, maybe technology, digital transformation, all of these help you. Um, but if you don't have a found, if you don't have a foundation and what works, uh, mm-hmm. then all you're doing is, yeah, you can do all of this stuff, but it's not going to really make the big impact. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen, uh, Bob, this has been fantastic. So all of Bob's information is going to be below this video so you can find out more. But before we go, Bob, tell people a little bit more about you and Caveat uh, Consulting. Caveat I'm Bob Risch. I'm a certified business coach with Caveat Institute. And we, we really focus on industry leaders who are seasoned and brand new, who are successful, know they're successful. We just help you get to that next level. Uh, we do that through systems and processes that have been historically proven from people like Brian Tracy, John Maxwell, Integrity Coaching, and also our processes that we've been writing for the last 30 years. Uh, we get results in three areas. We help you lower your busyness and increase your productivity. We help you increase your margins. But most of all, we want to help you balance your personal and professional life and we're able to do that for so many people around the world to find us it's easy just just log on to caveatcoach.com and all our all of our information is there yeah fantastic and yeah i would encourage people i say this all the time but i'm just going to repeat myself is that uh, if if you if you look at your life i guarantee you you spend money on hobbies you probably if you're into golf you probably you know, have a golf coach or whatever mm-hmm. uh, if you do other sports or other activities you probably spend money on coach how about spending it on the thing that puts bread on your table? The one area that you should, that you really should invest in the thing you do every day. So I would encourage you to check out, check out Bob and check out coaching in general. Uh, my name is John Golden, sales pop online, sales magazine, pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.